Hey everybody, how you doing today? We're starting a new segment on the Citadel of Titan. This is just going to be fluff that deals with where the Grey Knights live. You know, that's it. It's not going to talk about them at all anymore, just where they live, which is actually kind of interesting. That's why I'm reading it. So we can see, you know, how many bathrooms they have, what's their electric bill like, uh, maybe they have, you know, good food or something like that in a cafeteria. Let's find out. For almost 100 centuries, Titan has been the secret fortress of the Grey Knights. Glittering in the darkness of Saturn's shadow, the ice moon bristles with orbital defense platforms and fleets of sleek gray vessels. Beneath its frozen surface, generations of Grey Knights are created and laid to rest in an endless cycle of birth and death. At the base of Mount Anarch, tallest of, my, of Titan's peaks, rise the black basalt spires of the Citadel of Titan, the Grey Knight's fortress monastery. Built by the Emperor over 10,000 years ago, the Citadel of Titan has endured through countless ages of war and strife. Actually, it's not countless. It's 10,000. You just said so. Covered with dust and shadow, the dark edifice is festooned with micro cannons and ma massive lance turrets. Their heavy barrels aimed out into the night. It is a forbidding sight that, what, to, that welcomes visitors and brooks no trespass. Sorry about that. In fact, even the existence of the Citadel is a closely guarded secret. And in the populous space lanes of the Sol system, vessels give the moon a wide berth. Their captains, well aware that it does not pay to stray too close to the ominous moon. Okay, I like this. Whoever's writing this has to really understand how insanely humongous the solar system is. Nobody randomly wanders close to anything in interplanetary space, much less a moon of Jupiter. Never mind. Within the frigid halls of the Citadel, servitors and chapter serfs shuffle along empty corridors and tend to millions of menial tasks required to keep the fortress running. Occasionally, a towering gray knight will stride past, always with purpose, and always cloaked in the menacing air of barely contained power. The Citadel is the heart of the chapter, a place for battle brothers to rest, meditate, and train between their endless battles. The Augurium Such is the secretive nature of the Grey Knight's duty, and so duplicitous are the foes they face, that they cannot rely upon other servants of the Emperor to guide them to their prey. In most cases, by the time a planetary governor sends out a pan panic astropathic cry for aid and the presence of demonic forces is both detected and verified, it will be too late. Instead, the Grey Knights rely upon their prostinat prognosticate prognosticars. I'm going to go with prognosticars to alert them to demonic incursion, often months or years before these events occur, allowing them to appear before aid is called for and close the tears in reality before they can widen and flood real space with warp energy, the lifeblood of the demon. Prognosticars are Grey Knights specially gifted in reading the ebb and flow of the warp. Ensconced in the Silver Pinnacle, the central tower of the Citadel of Titan, this handful of Battle Brothers spend their lives untangling the strands of fate and looking into the future of the chapter. The mirrored chamber of the 
prognosticars, known as the Augurium, reflects the thoughts of the Grey Knights back upon themselves. Each battle brother must then sift through the images of the past, present, and future, looking for meaning, and the writhing black coils of demonic entropy that reveal where the veil between the worlds will be torn and demonic forces gather. ba -boom. Next, we will go on to the Chambers of Purity. And that will be in the next video. Until then, bye!